Hello, I'm Dick Termas. Uh, I want to uh, work with you on a uh, a workshop that you don't really see very much of. I think it's one of the most important basic ideas in drawing and in painting, but um, it, it, I don't know, people just don't get at it very much. But I'd like to show you what I uh, know about it, and and uh, it's what I call contour surface lines. <clears throat> there was a sculptor Henry Moore in um, England that used to do really great sculpture, uh, and all of his drawing here, his sketches of his of his uh, ideas were done with this system of drawing, and it isn't just an outline of stuff; it's actually showing you the contour and the surface of what the forms are. And so I, I thought I'd show you, first of all, a, um, a piece that I did that uh, kind of gives you an idea. This is actually my gallery here, but I want the next piece is um, just showing you how you get to my gallery and, and all of the I've got like 80 spheres in there. This is a piece I wanted to show you though. It's, it's everything is done with lines over the surface of it. And uh, the whole sphere is just filled with contour surface lines to give you the shape and the, and the forms uh, actually of the, of the subject matter that's in it. And it's, uh, <clears throat> it's interesting how, uh, how um, I filled the whole sphere with some sort of flowing lines all the way through it, just to give you the feel. So that's the kind of thing that I'm thinking of that I want to talk to you about. It's um, it's an interesting concept of how you can draw without doing just an outline of stuff, although the outline actually happens too. So let's. Uh, As you can see, the overall sphere right there and what it looks like. So we're back now. And I it, the fundamentals of this are pretty simple. And like a lot of the drawing and painting classes that I've ever taught, I always teach and make it come out of the really fundamental stuff. Um, the fundamental stuff that I'm thinking of is like a cylinder. <clears throat> A cylinder, if you were to think of instead of the lines that I drew to draw that cylinder, if you thought of the shape, the form of this, it would actually have a contour that copies that line all the way through and comes down to the bottom. That would be one of the contour surface lines of a cylinder. So here's the cylinder up here. And then the other contour surface line would go straight up and down. And when you're drawing and shading and painting, that's sort of the stroke on that, on that particular shape, wherever you are that you need to be using. It could be that you just use the up and down ones, like these, for your shading or your painting strokes, or you could use the other contour of it. So that's the contour of the, of the cylinder. And that's like tree trunks, that's barrels, that's uh, um, glasses, all kinds of pottery, some silos. I mean, it's, it's a lot of the stuff that's, that's uh, around us all the time. The cube is, is an interesting one too. And it has it projecting back in space like this. Um, it has the front surface would have one contour that would run and what it does is actually just copies the lines of the outside edge of the shapes, like that line right here and this one, that's one of the sets that runs across this. So this is the stroke, like if you did cross hatching in pen and ink sketches, if you do shading, these are the strokes that you should be using when you're on that particular side of that particular cube. And if it's up in here, then it would follow, it would copy these two lines right here. And so you're running back in space like this with your lines. 
and also straight across. It really seems quite simple, but it's amazing how important that is. And then this last one, we'll copy this line and this line, and it's straight up and down again, just like the outside edges, and going back on a diagonal back in space like so. That would be the, the contour of shading, of cross hatching in pen and ink, and painting the strokes that, that go on a shape like that. It's really best if you actually go the direction that, that they feel comfortable with, you know? So, and then the third one is the sphere. The sphere, I like to think of uh, uh, the contour surface lines are uh, a lot of times what you're basing it on is what, what the shading of it. And a lot of times the, that's based on where the sun is hitting or the light is hitting the sphere. So probably straight in like this, it would hit right there. And then there'd be contour lines coming off of that. That would be one of the contours. And the other one would be coming from this straight from right here. And then it would gradually curve out over this way, swirl in to the side, come across until it's a straight line there, straight here. And then it would actually curve around like this. I'm kind of a little off there. There we go, like so. So those would be the, the strokes, the contour surface lines of the sphere. And uh, like I say, that that's pretty important stuff. And it, it, it goes on, and, uh, if, if you do the contour lines, you don't actually have to even, let me see if I can find another color here. It, it actually would create this outside edge with just the contour lines themselves. So it, it, it kind of is a very, a very useful uh, technique. Now let's just see where this takes us though. If you uh, if you think of a if you think of a hose, a cylinder, and it's going like this, and it curves around and comes back behind itself, okay, like this, and comes out like so, and say there's another open end on this end. So what what would the contour surface line do there. It, it, it does something kind of odd. When it's coming across, its contour is like this. And it has to swing just like that first line swings right there. That's what you're copying. And then until, now, if you want this to go back in space like this, it would just keep going. See how that's going to attach right to this? That'd be the contour so far. But when you get up in here and it cuts across and it has to shift to this. Now, let's see. Let's just start bringing this back in space. And it would come back like so. See, the two of them aren't going to meet. So somewhere along here is, is a, a, a straight up and down line about right there. And this would gradually straighten out. This is gradually curved the other way, and it, that's how it makes the corner. That's, that's it shifting across over to the other way. So that's a really important thing to play with, too, because uh, if, if you, for instance, are drawing a, a tree trunk, or a tree, and you're using the contour lines of a tree, say this is the bottom of the tree down here, and it comes up and it goes up above your head and branches off up here like so, okay, and you have, it's, it's say your eye, the eye level is somewhere in here, so this is where your eye would be, or the horizon line would be, so this, the, I'm going to get this curving a little bit more down here, so these, the contour of this, the trunk, would be coming this way, all the way up until it gets to the eye level, and then it's going to straighten out, and then it's going to start curving the other direction. This would this just makes the tree look like it really belongs in that environment because you're looking down on it here, and you're looking up under it up here. So these lines, when they start getting up in here, 
are really curving up away from you. So that's one of the basic ideas of it too, is, is how <clears throat> the, the, when you put your stroke on there, you automatically are building in what you're looking up at and you're looking down at. So that's, a, that's an important part of this too. So uh, <clears throat> these can get, you know, you can really get into some fun, interesting sort of things with this. It, it actually can help you be creative. It, it, it gives you a, an approach to where you get to things that you don't normally get to. If you think about a, think about a blanket, I see one laying over here, or a, it's kind of an old a hat. But if it's all wrinkled like that, and you think, how okay, and you decide you're gonna just try and draw that. Uh, if you look at the lines, there'd be a line there, might be a line across down through here, and it, it actually wouldn't show it very much. But if you can add your contour lines across this and, and uh, put it in, it gives you it form. When I teach this a lot in classes, I'll throw a blanket out and it just like, it just flows around and everything. And then I ask people about, okay, how, where are the actual lines that you typically would draw? And there's like three or four lines, which really doesn't make it look like a blanket. But when you start adding these contour lines, then, then it makes a, a gigantic big difference. Um, so <clears throat> um, then another, another thing too is when you, um, if, let's just say for instance, we're, we're gonna do, do play with the cube sort of top. And I'm gonna just go like this with the cube and go way out here. And, and then maybe you might say, okay, well, what what would that create? Well, if you were to put lines to take the place of it, I'm gonna get a different color for a line. There'd be a line that runs here, be a line that runs there, there, and over here, and maybe like this and around like that. Then then this would be, if this were like a path or something. You see, that sort of gives you an idea of something that you might maybe could have created there on purpose. And um, so you see the dimension to it now, it becomes a real form, but that would be the front top. And then, then these contours could either be this stroke here or this stroke, or if it's a pen and ink sketch, it might be both of them. But uh, maybe it's this one back here. You just go with that curve right here. It's curving inward as it builds that. So that's the, the idea behind that is that you don't always use both of the contours. Sometimes you just use one, depending on, on uh, you know, what looks good. Okay, then, then let's, uh, let's play with uh, something here that's, that is kind of unique, I think. If you take, um, uh, uh, well, I'll just draw it first and then see if you can figure out what it is I'm drawing. Make sure it's on the page there. This is not drawing the outside lines at all. This is more like Henry Moore would actually draw. Can you get the feel of something happening here? But it's all just with contour surface lines. You see the human form there? I think my feet should have been over on this side, maybe more in the middle, that direction. But uh, it's laying back in space. And uh, I might just extend this out a little bit bigger head and then get it into the neck there. 
Um, maybe it's a wild, crazy person here, wild hair. And it sometimes can be <laughs> put it, thrown into it too. But that's one one kind of thing. And I, uh, let me show you something else that's kind of fun. And and um, so like human human forms. I mean, we have all of the we have cylinders cylinders in our fingers. We're kind of flat in our hands. So it's sort of like a, a flat flattened out uh, cubicle side in our hands. Um, and but sometimes I like to, uh, let me just, just show you, like, let's just create, create one more little guy like that. I'm gonna start with a, with a head. Go into a body. And then something like this where, where it actually curves across like that, that's sort of going from cylinder shape here into a sphere shape. And then maybe you just add some realism in the back here. And you end up with some kind of a little bird guy. But you can see the contour and, and you know, typically we draw this right here. And Sometimes that doesn't give you the the shape that you want. Um, <clears throat> let's let's try another thing here. I like the idea of, of it turn helping you do landscapes. I mean imaginary landscapes. So if you just start off with with lines, contour lines. Say you're thinking cylindrical here, so it could be turned into a cylinder, but then maybe it flattens out and it runs in a flat sort of thing like that and then maybe from here this line runs up and turns into another cylinder here flows down below and this will continue this back up into the air a little bit here and then maybe this side could actually come down turn it in and this could this could actually drop um, drop off here, go behind this kind of stuff. And then let's see, maybe this comes down like a cliff on this back side. See, and we're just it's sort of like letting letting the the contour stuff help us to come up with ideas. And maybe this flows across like this, another little mountain back here, maybe. That's a rounded shape that's back behind this one. And um, let's see where we're running. I guess I can come over here. This could run down to a, a flat place here. So this would actually create a line right there. And maybe it's a flat plateau. Can we still, yep, we can still see. And we're gonna come up here with some cliff formations. All right, and let's let's go back over on this side a little bit and add a, a flat plateau here too. That ends up dropping off down off of this corner. So it's like a corner of a cube type of thing. And then maybe it hits bottom down here and there's a cylinder that comes into this. So it could could continue to flow like that. So a lot of times, and even like clouds, let's just look at clouds up here. Instead of just drawing the outside edge of the clouds, maybe think of them as, as shapes, as, as forms, uh, and, and come off like so. Maybe another one back in here that's back behind this. But <clears throat> these could all be coming out of the contour instead. So you can kind of get the, the feel of, of the roundness of the shapes and all of that. So uh, that's that's kind of a fun thing. And that, um, I'm just looking for, oh, here's a good idea too. Let's just play with this because this is always a fun one to explore. And that's the, well, I'll see if you can figure it out. So 
So I'm gonna start like this, and then it's gonna gradually curve like this. It's gonna curve around in a circle. Go in a straight line there, and it's gonna start curving the other way. It's gonna go back in space. This is going back in space, and it's gonna reconnect over here. So we could say, so what, what is that thing? Well, it could be a donut, right? If the if you see the outside edge and the inside edge, see how it turns into a the donut type shape, or who knows, maybe it's maybe it's a hairdo for some weird guy like that too. <laughs> I don't know if that one is anything that you might want, but it's, it, but the donut shape I think is is very 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 valuable. Um, here's here's another thing that I do a lot of, and I th I think it's very worthwhile. It's a way to uh, it's a way to find uh, new creative like uh, animals. I'm going to show you an animal second, but first, uh, like a creative shape, like maybe it's a piece of pottery that you want to explore. So if you if you actually start with the crisp 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 um, objects like this like a cylinder and say you're stacking it on a on a, another cylinder and you're stacking that on a on a sphere okay and you kind of line them up in a in a line like this and then say this is put on a i'm going to put it on a cube that sort of sits in space like that Okay, and then um, let me put that on a, another cylinder. All right, so you have that stacking of of objects, and you but in order to make it like flow, uh, the contour lines. One of the sets of the contour lines is what you would choose. So if you just, for instance, you imagine that you melt that. You put it in an oven and you melt it down and it just everything starts oozing across to over to everything else. But the top of this would probably curve like this as it as it melts down. It would run down and it would curve into the, the cylinder below. So this particular contour would really help show it. So it bends and curves into this. This then would curve and 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 melt into this so you're using these contour lines to melt this together these lines would run down and and curve and 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 this edge would be disappear right here all in fact all of these little edges when you get done with your new created form all of those harder edges would disappear these would these would turn into you'd use this part of this of the sphere. It'd be straight through the center, curve out like this on that one, and then but it would flow into these. So these lines would just come right in and attach to those, and it would flow into. It. See how it's starting to become a flowing shape instead of just a hard edge thing. And then these guys would would round off. And this would flow like this. This would flow the opposite way as it comes across here. This would melt into the sphere guy. That would come in and, and flow. So you, you sort of attach the contour surface lines to each other as you come down, and it ends up giving you this real neat melted shape. All right? It comes across like this. This melts into that, OK? curves this direction. So it's a, it takes a little practice to learn how these work, but but you in the end, you know, this could become a, the inside of a lamp or something like that. Yeah, maybe there's a light bulb in here or something. But that would, you know, that's one of the ways to really help you get some creativity. And if you are doing pottery or building new shapes, like uh, if you could flip this sideways, it could become a really cool new car. 
It could be a new uh, sh uh, shape for an outer space rocket or something. Um, let's just try something sideways and see what, what it turns into. Okay, then just kind of looking at my ideas here just a little bit to make sure I get all the stuff covered. But if you were to, let's, let's say this is a possible way to create a new creature, okay? And you, I'm gonna start with a, what I think of as a head, but it's gonna be solid shapes. And I'm gonna stick a cylinder on the back of it, like this. And then I'm gonna put a cube on the back of that. And keep going back in the same space. It'll look very stiff to start with, but you'll be amazed how how it will loosen up once we play with it. And let's just try a, a cylinder behind this for a ways and go into a sphere, partial sphere anyway. I'm gonna get it back a little further, like that. Okay, and then let's go with a I'm going to put a cone shape back here, like that. That's going in the back. Now, how do you how do you turn that into a weird animal? You know, well, um, it wouldn't have to be a weird animal; it could be a, just a normal animal, but it'd be a made up animal. The same thing. If you can, if you can, I'm going to put a, a, a like a beak on here. I'm going to put a cylinder, or no, a, a cone popping out of its so it's a nose. I'm going to add um, here, I'm going to add a cylinder that comes out this direction. So I'm shooting off of this line here with lines for the cylinder. I'm going to put a sphere there, another cylinder coming down here, and then maybe some kind of a thing that fits with that. All right, so that, that could be one of the legs. I'm going to put another leg way back here like that a cylinder that comes off of it and it'll do a similar kind of deal so it looks like it matches another cylinder coming down and some kind of leg or uh, foot type guy okay same thing would happen over on the other side i, I i'll uh, just skip that for a second though i'm going to put a, a sphere actually on the on the for the eyes here I'm going to stick a sphere there and I'm going to stick a sphere over here. So that'll help get a kind of a bulgy eye thing looking. Well, I better put I better put some legs over here too. So you so it looks right. So this has got to curve this way. And it probably would come down in there somewhere. And this one, I don't know if it would even show. I'm I'm gonna pretend like it didn't show. Uh, now let's 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 smooth this off like we were talking about before. I'm going to start back here. I'm going to flow this, flow these shapes into each other, because animals don't don't come in blocky forms. They're, they they everything flows nicely in nature. Nature doesn't mess around with hard edge stuff like this. So let's round this off. Have it come across here. Round it off here. See how that can be rounded off easily. And this would the contour on this would run this way. So I'm going to switch my contour. Get rid of that hard line there. Round this off a little bit. This would contour would run like that on this one, so it rounds that off. This could actually flow into this more, and so this would be the contour that would run back for the leg, and then this this guy here, this head, to flow into the neck. It would flow like that. This would the beak would flow into this guy so that you could get rid of all those harsh lines this would all be rounded off back here but round into this too see how the lines start to get get this to be a relaxed thing this could bend out a little bit so it look doesn't look like it's going to break off animals don't like their legs to break off so usually they swell as they're going into the body more like that and that's the contour of that cylinder. Remember the cylinder that we did in the back? This one's the cylinder's cur curving like this. So it's going down below your eye. And you end up with, and this could just flow right into that. And it'd actually get rid of those lines like that. So it just flows across and goes into the back. Um, 
I'm going to erase this a little bit and have it go somewhere else because it might be fun to to do a in the head there make some kind of a and we could put a little spheres on the top of those or something so that those look like just to make it a little more unique get a little little uh pupils and see see how the contours uh, actually can help give you the flow and the feeling of of those lines this could flow in a little bit more here too and run right in and across here and then switch over and go over to that but it it actually gives you that shape that you typically don't don't get and um and you you know it, it you could just you can just go on and on and on with this kind of stuff i mean you can make really strange birds and strange animals insects this looks a little bit more like a insect than it does uh so that back leg could run like that and go down this one maybe goes maybe he's got it up in the air a little bit like this and then comes down so it makes it look like he's he's really on the ground and then you can put him on a on a big big cube here all right so that's the idea behind contour surface line remember it's the basic idea of it is is that it's really cool for helping you shade too because these are the strokes but it it it, it in by itself can work very well as as a way to create new ideas and to keep control of the the flow of the of the shape the form all right thank you i'm glad you watched and try keep practicing at this stuff and see what see what you come up with okay appreciate it